What's up, guys? What's going on, man? I'm Paul. This is Pauline Theology. We're back. We're going through Judges. This is the Daily Devotional. Glad you're here. God, glad you guys are here listening, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure going through this as we are entering in the final uh, saga of uh, Gideon. So we're coming to a, a close, and it is going to be the scriptures of eight, chapter 8, Judges 22 through 35, or to the end of the chapter. So if you haven't read yet, go ahead and stop here, read through the scripture, come back, and we'll talk about um, the things that we talk about, which is, first, what's actually say, and second, what's the characteristics of God we see, third, what's the characteristics of man we see, and then how we apply all these things to our life. All right, now that you're back. What actually happened in the story? Well, it looks like Gideon, after um, defeating these guys, Orb and Zeb, you know what I'm saying, he got them chains off the camels. You know, he's like snatching chains off necks and stuff like that. Well, the, the people ask him to be their king, like reign over us, man. Um, yeah, they were like, uh, rule over us and let your sons rule over us and your son's son rule over us. Like start a dynasty here now with you. And uh, Gideon's like, no, nah, I can't do that, man. We're not going to do that. He's like, because the Lord reigns over you. And then after he says that, he goes and says, but let me ask you this one thing, man. Present alms to me. Uh, give me your money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so they do that. They're like, oh, for sure. We will surely do that. They open up a blanket, throw all of these earrings in here, these gold earrings. And it says it was like uh, a lot of money. A lot of money that they gave to him. And what did Gideon do with all that gold that he got from these guys? Well, he built, uh, he made an ephod. And it said it, it, the, the people whored after it, man. The people went after it. They, they uh, cheated on God. They falsely worshipped because of it. But the question is, what is an ephod? Uh, ephod could be a couple of different things, man. It could be like the clothing of uh a uh of what the the priest wore which was specifically tasked for only the priest in a certain location so first thing he could be causing the people to worship maybe not a false god but in the wrong place so it was incorrect worship uh but most likely though it's it's not going to be that i think the other one is is um that it's more like he constructed an idol either of himself or on some other type of deity and began to worship it in that city. And it was it was wrong, obviously, because it says it caused him to be caught in a snare. His family and the whole people of Israel went after it. So he, he did a, a very bad thing. And then after that, they had rest for 40 years. That's what it said. And then uh, not only that, it said that he had a bunch, a bunch of uh, sons. And, uh, yeah, and then... Uh, he had uh, one with a concubine, and his name was um, Abimelech, and he died. And then it says that the people of, um, a little short thing about Abimelech is that in Hebrew, that means my father is king. So even though he said, I won't be king, he kind of didn't show it that way, because first off, he required tribute of all the people there. And then uh, second, he named his son, my father is king. So even though he said that it was a name only that he would say that God is king, but really he claimed himself to be king. What's up with you, Gideon? You you were so good, so humble at first, scaredy cat. And then you grew up and did what God called you to do, and you fought these wars and won this stuff for Israel. And then you, you kind of turn your back. You kind of do wrong um, on God. After that, it says that Gideon died, but the land had rest for 40 years, so he ruled over it pretty well. And then Gideon died, and it said that the people, again, the people went back to the thing that they do so easily, which is serve other gods. Man. So what does that, what's that got to do uh, uh, with God? What does it show? Well, I, I think that it shows God's graciousness because God would deliver a people, first off, who would turn from him. So we got Gideon. He rose Gideon up to do something so amazing in saving his people. And he knew. God's not dumb, man. He has complete uh, uh, and, and utter understanding of all things. And so he knew the heart of Gideon. That when he would raise him up, though he started off humble and scared, that he would eventually turn. And so that's just so amazing, first off, that God would do that. Um, that he would allow his people to be saved by a person 
who he knew would end up ultimately failing him and the entire uh, nation of Israel. But also that the people of Israel, he would save knowing that they were going to turn away from him anyway. That, that uh, this is not this is called a judge's cycle for a reason. This thing continues to happen over and over and over. And God knows their heart is not truly repentant when they cry out for help for him. But he would still raise up a savior to stop the oppression that continues to happen to them. God's gracious. Most definitely. Uh, number two, what is um, about man? What does it say about man? Well, I think it says that even the greatest of men fail. Your childhood stories, my childhood stories, always talked about Gideon as being this great guy who commanded the, the armies and won the war and, and uh, tested God and God proved himself. But we don't get to the part where he builds an idol. Some even say that that ephod is him, a statue of him wearing that ephod and that others will worship him. So that's even more contrary to his his bait about that uh, uh, God rules over you, but first give me your taxes, and then I'm going to name uh, my uh, son, my father's a king, then I'm going to put a statue of myself up so that uh, everybody can worship me. So yeah, even though uh, you might see them as one of the greatest of men, the best of men, well, the best of men fail. The best of men fail. Well, how can we apply this to our lives, man, seeing how crazy... This Gideon saga was. It was like whoop, like a roller coaster. You know what I'm saying? What can we apply to uh, this? What can we learn? Well, I think first off and foremost is that we understand God's graciousness. That God is good to a people like us who are sinfully all the time, who are sinning all the time, doing things wrong. But he would still save us. And he saved us up from a man who wouldn't fail. That is the God man, Jesus. That he would save us through Jesus, that he would deliver us from our enemies, from our oppressors, which is sin and death, through one who would never, ever again die, who would never, ever fail, Jesus. That's the biggest thing we can come from this. But I think another important thing is that, man, the people that we look up to sometimes, I think they're so great, which they are, may fail us, man. And that's okay. I mean, it's it stinks it's bad but god forgives he's gracious but as we we see these people and we see they fail we recognize that they're human and ultimately know that we are following christ we are following god and that we're not following men so i, I pray this uh, helps you today as you go through your uh, life and morning and afternoon or night or where whatever time it is that uh, you remember these truths and hold them dear to your heart I'll see you guys in the next episode.